united on uh, our way forward as a team. People that are now allowing their frustrations and their own personal agendas or, or, or issues on the pandemic to, to interfere with our progress are not part of the team. And so we're, we're, we're focused and that's why we made the decision last night. You don't want to make that decision, but really she made it first. Have you ever wondered how we decide what stories we're going to cover, what's going on out there? Well, we're going to give you a little bit of an insight with two of our columnists and our editor emeritus, Lori Goldstein and Warren Kinsella is joining me. Okay, I'm going to stop there because someone's uh, clock is ding. <laughs> I just, sorry, it's my grandfather clock here. <laughs> and I just thought that was a maybe, perfect start, maybe, actually. Maybe we, maybe we should just keep that in there because, you know. You should have uh, musical accompaniment on all videos. Yes. It, it started exactly when Adrian started speaking. I was like, oh my God, it's the bell tolling for Aaron O'Toole. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, it very well could be Warren. So, you know what? Let's just keep going. So let's give our viewers like the reality and the insight yes. to what goes on. And even when we have our news meeting, you know, things go sideways. Okay, Warren. So you recently wrote about the ongoing drama and the real issues internally, the internal strife within the Conservative Party, just when Aaron O'Toole thinks that perhaps he may have things calmed down enter Senator Denise Batters, and she throws a giant grenade in the middle of his leadership campaign. Yeah, she sure did. And, uh, you know, she, I guess the big question we've all got, is she alone? Is there an invisible army behind her? I guess we'll find that out. But, you know, at a time when we should all be focusing as a country and the opposition should be focusing on things like the terrible flooding in B.C., and the destruction being caused there, inflation at a 20 year high, you know, where's Justin Trudeau? Like where, where's the government gone? You know, stuff like that. Here we are talking about how fast the Tory leadership sh review should be. And, you know, that's regrettable, but I, you know, I've lived through this as you guys know, uh, with the Kretschian and Martin leadership wars. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, when these things get started, they're pretty hard to stop. Lori, I actually said the word uh, with O'Toole that it's his t leadership campaign because it almost still is like a campaign. He's, you know, trying to hang on after the loss of the in the federal election. But uh, Warren brings up an interesting point uh, with respect to the back in the liberal days, the Martin Kretchen era. I think it, Lori, if social media existed back then, it probably would have been a lot messier, a lot bloodier and a lot nastier. But, you know, the conservatives do this all the time to themselves. And now we have uh, a very vocal member uh, of the conservative caucus uh, Senate who has now just been kicked out, according to what she said, uh, by voicemail. But Lori, um, you know, we've seen these rodeos, these movies before, but how do you see this one differently for Aaron O'Toole? Well, basically, I think, you know, Warren is the guy that understands this stuff best because he, he was an insider. He's seen how it operates. Looking at it externally, I would just say that every day this goes on is a great day for Justin Trudeau for yeah. exactly, exactly the reasons Warren said, and uh, one of the conservative MPs from out west, Michelle Rempel Gardner, um, tweeted in frustration to what Batters had done. I'm trying to prepare a package about how inflation is hurting my constituents out here. And now the news cycle is blown out by what you've done. I think the second thing it does, it sends a horrible message to the public, which is that the conservatives think their internal problems are more important than the price of milk and beef and the problems we're having with supply chains um, and, and British Columbia. And, and so it, it sends a message to me to voters that, well, you guys only really care about each other and what are you doing? You're, you're fighting with each other as you have been ever since you lost the 2015 election. You went through Andrew Scheer, now you've got Aaron O'Toole. Um, you know, now like this could go on until 2023 if they don't, if they don't deal with it before the convention where they're supposed mm -hmm. to look at his thing. Um, it happened, remember the night of the election, one of the members of the uh, Conservative National Executive, they mm -hmm. called for his resignation right away, Bert Chen. What I would say is that if it was me, I would do one of two things. The caucus has the power, and they've given themselves the power post-election, to depose Aaron O'Toole. The caucus internally, 20%, uh, I think it is, can have a, a private vote. Should there be a review, then there will be a review. 
If they don't think they can win with Aaron O'Toole in the next election, whenever it is, then they should pull the trigger now. Alternatively, Aaron O'Toole can call for a review of his leadership. He doesn't have to wait for the party to do it or these rules that they talk about. He can say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to bell the tiger, right? Do you want me or not? Right. And then at least we would have a, have a, there would be that vote first, right? And then, you know, whatever percentage he got if he decided he wanted to stay. But to me, what they're doing now is damaging, it's intolerable, and it is an insult to the Canadian people. We don't pay you folks to go up there and play internal politicking games. We pay you to be Her Majesty's loyal opposition because the government needs to be held in check. That's just democratic, doesn't matter if it's conservative or liberal. So do your jobs, cut this nonsense out, you have the way to end this, end it now. You know, Warren, a lot of Canadians would agree with us, uh, particularly because of the results of the last election. They weren't confident enough with Justin Trudeau to give his government a majority, uh, so backed with a with a minority government. But to, to Laurie's broader point about the behavior and the actions of the Conservatives on behalf of Canadians, uh, they are there to be the check for what arguably is one of the most irresponsible federal governments we've seen in some time. Not only irresponsible, but so many p people, uh, Canadians and around the world, don't take this government particularly seriously based on previous actions by the current prime minister. So Warren, it's, it's, it's a weighty things that Canada is facing, not the least of which is this Three Amigos Summit with the um, President of the United States and Mexico. Uh, and now, of course, we've got this massive auto deal, uh, auto bill that President Biden has signed that is going to affect Canadian manufacturing for auto sector. Uh, I mean, these are things that you want the opposition party to be hammering the government on to make sure that Canadians are being um, protected in the best interest of our country. But all of this stuff is going by the wayside. None of it is being um, argued and debated. And instead, we have this bun fight amongst um, Team Blue that may just end up with the same result they had in the first place, and they may not um, change you know, the, the leadership. How do you see it? Well, I, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. I mean, you know, the Conservative Party, like, guys, you, you got representation in every province. You've got representation in every region. And Justin Trudeau at the start of August was he had a lock on a majority and you guys held him to a minority. You've done that twice. So, you know, it's not as bad as the good senator is saying. But once again, you know, they're the gang that uh, can't shoot straight. They're, you know, they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Whatever you want to come up with is a way of describing these guys. And then like Justin Trudeau is the luckiest guy in politics mm -hmm. we all know and i know but you know i volunteered full disclosure for joe biden last year like biden just doesn't have much time for justin trudeau he does not have the relationship with trudeau that reagan had with Mulroney or clinton had with Kretzian. it's just not that kind of relationship and you know trudeau has gotten no from biden on pipelines on the border on trade I don't think he's going to come back from Washington with anything. And, and, and who saves him? Who saves him at the 11th hour? Aaron O'Toole and Aaron O'Toole's caucus fighting, you know, washing the dirty laundry cliche out in public. And, you know, the public say, well, look, if you can't manage your own house, you can't manage the country. Log on to Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, we want to hear from you. So hit the comments below. And we always want to keep you informed and entertained. Please subscribe to our Midday Sun.